Good morning, my darlings. It is Friday morning and I have been up bright and early, well, early. <laughs> not bright it's meant to be a spring morning but um as you might be able to guess from my many layers one two <laughs> you can't see it but three it is gray and raining this morning which is a huge shame because i'm actually parked up outside the beautiful travelbury house for a pilates and wild swim morning every other time that i have done this we've been so lucky even if it's been like this to begin with by some magic, the clouds have parted and blue skies and sunshine has come through as soon as we are about to go for the wild swim in the lake. But today, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. I've got a feeling Pilates will be inside this morning. Yesterday was the most gorgeous morning in the entire world. So it's a little bit of a shame that um, we didn't do it yesterday, but never mind. who was to know. I've been up randomly since 5 a.m. So I've had a very productive morning. I've got all of my emails, loads of my admin done. Um, so I'm gonna really enjoy the next couple of hours. I made this smoothie yesterday and I have started to make two days in a row. So this is my usual strawberry, blackberry, blueberry, banana, almonds, oats, overnight oats, kefir, <laughs> wild nutrition protein powder. It is my yummy morning smoothie. So this is gonna keep me going. But yes, I just thought I would check in and say good morning. I will try and get a few little clips of Pilates and swimming if possible. I think there might be a few familiar faces there today. I think Lauren's gonna come as well, actually, Lauren McDermott, um, who I just adore. <laughs> She's so lovely and her content is just sensational. So I'm gonna go down the drive, meet up with the girls and um, have a lovely start to my Friday morning despite Le Miserable weather. darlings feeling a little bit more um, perky than the last time I spoke to you probably looking a little bit betraggled that was just the loveliest way to start the day as always just the most amazing group of ladies everyone really supports each other and hypes each other up it was just fantastic um, today was all about um, sustainability within well, everything really. So one of the brands, so normally it's just not like a branded thing at all. It's just Chloe and Fiona inviting people to come and um, do Pilates and do a wild swim. But today the founder, Lucy of Aspiga was there. They do the most gorgeous dresses. They've got a shop on Kings Road and apparently they now have a shop in Stowe on the Wold as well. So I might actually pop there um, a little bit later which would be lovely. Um, my toes, I still cannot feel. They are still numb. Apparently the lake was 12 degrees, but I am sure it was colder than that. It felt colder than the lake at Heckfield and that was nine degrees. Um, but yeah, still, still very, very fresh indeed. Just driving through the beautiful Cornbury Park now. Fiona has actually had this road tarmacked because we are doing these wild swim and Pilates mornings a lot more frequently. When I first came to do it, we basically had to four-wheel drive um, 
over the parkland, <laughs> which is quite an experience. But I've got my post Wild Swim Glow heated steering wheel on, so my hands have just about defrosted. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna quickly head to Dalesford to get myself a coffee <laughs> to warm up. Um, and I might actually go, depends what time I get there. No, I'll miss the 12 o'clock yoga, that's a shame. Um, I might go for a very quick normal temperature swimming pool swim and then have a shower before heading to snow. That's the plan for the morning. in the car again still haven't brushed my hair and still haven't put any makeup on so i apologize i've just spent the last couple of hours in the the nest which is like the kind of restaurant cafe area i don't even think they call it a cafe like a deli area in the club the bamford club and um i just went and grabbed a couple of my new favorite thing to buy in the farm shop, this is my new obsession. It is the organic spiced chicken and apricot tagine with chickpeas. I like to eat half a portion of this and then freeze the other half. Ooh. And it is so delicious. It's a really nice midweek lunch just with a little bit of rice. Um, tasty and healthy. Got an oat milk chai latte as well, which I did just spill half of this on my car. Whoops, Daisy. I think I'm actually going to go home via Hook Norton Woods because I've got a feeling if I don't pick some more wild garlic now, I might miss the opportunity um, because we're kind of coming to the end of the season now and I've only been twice. So I think I'm going to go and pick some more and then maybe do a nice wild garlic pesto pasta for my dinner. Well, I decided to come home and get on with some work instead of going to Hook Norton because can you actually see this rain? Oh my goodness. If you can't see it, you can probably hear it. I think it might actually be thundering as well. Not quite the perfect spring day. But on the plus side, we've got Nicholson's here doing lots of planting. <laughs> well, plus side for the plants, not plus side for them. Um, <laughs> I think they're taking shelter. So I've got lots of lovely bits to show you as soon as it stops raining. And just like that, the weather has changed again and it's sunny hallelujah i love coming into this room when it's sunny okay i think we should go outside and see what the nicholson's oh oh my gosh my own video playing back at me ah! uh yes let's go and see what the gardening team have been up to today and i might also do a bit of rhubarb foraging because i want to make a rhubarb and banana loaf this is where little bunny rabbit sits so that he can keep an eye out for as soon as mommy comes down the stairs. You're so sweet. Should we go into Dickie's garden? Come on then. Oh, what were you doing out there, you pterodactyl? In preparation for making this cake, I'm going to put my butter on the agar so that it warms up a little bit because it's meant to be at room temperature. Okay, my boys, come on then. Let's go and see. Let's go and see. Come on, Lily. Oh, these are the tulips that I picked yesterday. I might pick a few more to bring into the house. Oh, it's lovely. It's all looking so neat and tidy. I love that smell and that feeling in the air after a day of rain. Oh, it's lovely. Right, I saw them doing something over here, but I wasn't actually sure what they were doing. I think maybe they were just trimming or like tidying the edge of the bed ahead of... I mean, we're not actually planning on doing anything with the pond. We're just going to see if it naturally sorts itself out. Have they planted something? Maybe they planted some bits. Don't recognise these things. I think they're new. Unless that's the more muscari. I don't know. Okay, let's head down here. Oh, listen to the bird song. I love it. Did you know? Because I've always been told that you're meant to deadhead daffodils. Well, you're actually not meant to deadhead them if they're in your lawn. Don't really know why. Right, let's see. Oh, I forgot my loo roll tubes. Back to the house. There we go. Now that it is bean planting season, I'm back on the loo roll tube scavenger hunt so that I can grow my beans and their roots won't get disturbed. Okay. Okay. 
Gosh, I was only in here watering yesterday and everything needs watering again. If you just feel, look, my squash is coming out, my courgettes, yay. Yeah, if you just feel just underneath the surface, you can tell if your seedlings need watering. I'm gonna give everything a quick whiz. there's one thing I don't need to do, it's plant any more seeds, but I think we all know by now that this is an addiction that I have, and you know what? <laughs> it's not hurting anybody. So, with that said, I just saw this little sachet of Courgette Gold Rush in my seed box, so I'm going to do two of those. I'm going to do two of this buttercup squash, because that sounds fun, and I'm going to do two of the runner beans. When I say I'm going to do two, I'm actually going to do four of each, because I always do two seeds in each seed tray. That's all I'm going to do. Do not let me sow any more seeds today. That's it. And then I need to stop. I have got some seeds... <laughs> I have got some seeds over here which I might direct sow. Um, I mean, I've got pots left, and if you've got pots left, you've got to fill them, right? But no, I really do need to practice self-control. Oh, it looks like Charlie's bought me a bush. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have to stop because it's getting ridiculous. I need my friends to, well, I need the frosts to be over so that I can give loads of these to friends and family that have now got gardens and allotments. There's also quite a bit of pricking out I need to do because these chards aren't going to get any bigger. Um, these beetroots probably need pricking out too. So yeah, it's all looking very fabulously busy and alive in here. Yay! This is the greenhouse of someone who genuinely loves gardening. Who shall we watch? Oh, my battery is about to die. raised beds to check on everything. Pleased to report that my peas are all doing so well. When they were this big last year, the pigeons were having a real nibble on them. Oh my gosh, hang on a second. We've got the first pea flower. Look, can you see it? Oh my gosh, this is exciting. Um, so the black thread, as you might be able to hear, we've got a lot of birds, the black thread is working. And in other amazing news, well, the herb bed is looking sensational. I need to use a lot of <laughs> a lot of these herbs. If you've got any herby recipes, please let me know. We need to drink some like herbal teas as well, I reckon. Sage recipes, marjoram recipes, please let me know. In more exciting news, my first outdoor sown seeds are starting to come up. Can you see this little line here? These are wrap no, no, off. This way, no, Lynn, filet, no, here. Come here, come here. You are such a minxy, minxy bad boy. Oh, ruining my moment. Yes, so this is a line of radish, which is exceptionally exciting. I interplanted my radish with carrot. Oh, I can't wait to eat little radishes. But funnily, I actually, oh, there's more, because I actually planted these radish. Can you see down here? I planted these before I planted those over there. And my goodness me, I did well with the spacing, if I say so myself. They are pretty well spaced. Um, can you see it's like boop, 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 as opposed to them all being clustered together. And I also did some on this side, a little bit more wiggly. But here they are. Oh, this is so exciting. Funnily, I planted these seeds the same day that I put my lettuce out. And the lettuces have barely grown. So weird, huh? Life is a mystery. Oh, I can't wait to eat radish risotto. Have radish crudités. Oh, 
this is so good. So good, so good. What else is occurring down here? Dexter investigating. I planted my little items down here. Look at the wildflower turf. Looks like masses of little ferns. Um, but this is wildflower turf and it'll be its third year. Yeah, I think this is our third year of wildflower turf and give us another sunny weekend and it'll just explode with flowers. It's one of my favorite ever evolving parts of the garden. Outdoor dahlias that I didn't uproot from last year starting to come up. My indoor freshly planted dahlias are starting to come up. I love this time of year. Ooh, okay, this is one of the things that Nicholson's did today. Three new trees, one, two, three, because the old ones died in the frost last year. Oh my gosh, is this a cardoon? Look. Cardoon. Noah Calhoun. Look at this. Giant heads here. Look at that. Goodness me, that's exciting. Everything is coming to life. Dickens is weeing on my peonies. Thanks for that, buddy. Right, let's grab a fresh bit of rhubarb and go and make our banana and rhubarb bread which I think will be great food for a snack tomorrow I think actually yeah two stems will do because did I even tell you tomorrow is George and Petra's official move date so we're going to help them move in so I think there'll be lots of cups of tea going around Charlie's mum and dad are coming to help too so I think a rhubarb and, and banana cake will go down a treat amongst all the moving efforts right let's go and start baking well, excitingly, I have all the ingredients, kind of, that I need for a banana bread. Anyone that knows me in real life will, well, and you guys actually, <laughs> will know that I'm not the best at baking. They tend to go better if I just stick to following a Thermomix recipe, which I'm kind of gonna do. However, I'm swapping out light brown sugar for coconut sugar, hoping it'll be a bit healthier. And I don't have any Greek yogurt, but I do have sour cream. So I think that'll work. Hopefully, let's give it a go. So I've sent the recipe over to the Thermomix. Let's see if it can find it. Oh, but I think first of all, there we go, banana bread. First of all, I'm gonna prepare my rhubarb because I'm gonna be adding this in at the end. So I'm gonna wash it, cover it in some sugar to sweeten it up a little bit and just let it absorb the sugary yumminess. Okay, my darlings, my rhubarb and banana cake is in the oven. I'm feeling optimistic. This might actually be a success. I really hope so. And I've just had a delivery here from Night Timber, which could not be more perfectly timed with the uh, moving house celebrations of the weekend. Oh my gosh, it's something for the coronation. How lovely. Ooh, classic cuvee. Dear Josie, this, join us in toasting a new era for Britain with the release of our limited edition 2023 bottle. Exciting, look at this. Oh my gosh, that is heavy. We've got a little biscuit. Oh, it's little, it's snapped a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it'll taste just as wonderful. Oh, I'm excited to see the 2023 bottle. Charlie did buy a few bottles a couple of weeks ago, so I, we might actually have seen it. Oh no, I've not seen that. My goodness, stunning. Hang on, I need two hands to get this out safely. And what a gorgeous presentation box as well. So it comes in, this would be such a lovely gift if you are heading to someone's coronation house party, then what a fantastic bottle to take with you as a gift. So perfect, oh my gosh, I love it. Can you imagine if I just flung that out? So this is their classic cuvee. English sparkling wine, one to rival the very best in the world. And I have to say, it really 
does. I ha this is in my top three champagnes of all time and it's competing with the ones that are actually made in champagne. This is of course not a champagne, it's an English sparkling wine, but you know. <laughs> Look how gorgeous this is. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Night Timber. What a gift, my goodness. Don't know if we should open it tomorrow. I feel like we should take another Night Timber with us tomorrow, maybe a rosé, and then open this on the coronation. Amazing, yay. Listen to that bird song. So beautiful. So while the banana and rhubarb is in the oven, let me go and show you what was planted today. Sounds like Charlie's home, so I'm sure he'll come along too. Okay, so we're doing our early evening garden walk, looking at all the new bits, and I just wanted to show you a close-up of our pear tree because it's just looking incredible in all its glory, in full bloom. Look at this, such perfect flowers. Dexter is investigating the wild turf. Charlie is investigating the new trees. So we got three new Portuguese laurel to match in with the existing ones. Yeah, they're a slightly different variety because we couldn't find this A bit variety. more shade loving, hopefully. Um, they look very substantial, don't they? Yeah, obviously they replaced the three trees that were here sadly died. Yeah. Um, but actually, everything happens for a reason. Now and they match. Now, we just have home oak at the end, Portuguese laurel, and then a home oak at the end. So it kind of makes sense. Sure does. Um, Let's go and look at the new ornamental pear tree. That's pretty. Cat got some good pictures of all the blossoms. Yeah. Our crabapple arch is also coming into bloom. This is one of my favourite features of the garden when it's in full bloom. It just frames either the house or the church absolutely perfectly. How's the herbaceous border doing? Someone left a comment in the last video saying that last year they took a sip of wine every time either you or I said herbaceous border oh, and they got completely smashed. Yeah. Well, I said I'm sorry, but get ready for round two. Herbaceous oh, border coming back to life. So spot the difference over here. First of all, this gorgeous tree which is one of my favorite trees in the garden, is coming into leaf and it won't be long until it comes into bloom. Unbelievable. This is, is it a cherry blossom? Nope. Apple blossom? Crab apple. Oh, it's a crab apple. Yeah, and then that's a cherry oh, tree on the left. It just blossoms so beautifully. But the new thing around here is this espaliered ornamental pear. Nope. It, it's <laughs> It's so an, you can tell, right? It's because, an apple. Yes, it's an espalier apple. Right, I thought we said we were going to get a pear. No, because... It, Don't you need a pair of pears so they fruitate each other? No. So the pears down there, these are self-fertilising, these ones. So um, oh, right. you can tell it's apple because it's got the pink, yeah? And pear is white. Mostly, yeah, look, that's pear down there. Well, there we go. So we've got an espalier apple. <laughs> Oh, it's going to look amazing as yeah. it grows. So, so will it just keep growing outwards? Yeah, well, so what you have to keep doing with these is taking the top off. So oh, right. So the energy goes that way. Right. <clears throat> so obviously the aim will be that these will grow right down here. Uh -huh. um, and you have to keep taking the top off. We don't really want it any taller than that. Um, it's Ooh. obviously a much younger plant mm. because of the space that we had available. Which means it was cheaper. <clears throat> it wasn't actually that much cheaper. <laughs> um, but it's a much younger plant, whereas if you go over here, obviously this one, but you can see Jules uh, from Nicholson said, because you <clears throat> basically hard, hard fr stone fruits, so mm. cherries and stuff, you prune in the summer. So this cherry tree, when it's done blossoming, come July, August, will give it a, a, a nice prune. Whereas soft stone fruits, or soft fruits, like apples and pears, Stars. and quinces, um, they get pruned in the winter. So in the winter, we will take, you see that blossom, I know it looks nice now, but there's little twigs coming out yeah. the top. Those will have to come off, because mm -hmm. that will then encourage the growth that way. Have you noticed that the uh, the wisteria is uh, coming into bloom this we, year? We didn't have it last year, because we cut it the wrong time of year, didn't we? We did, but it's gonna Super look expensive. amazing. It's doing really well. Yeah. Been feeding it, so hopefully. Yeah. Is my car still charging? Let's see. This herbaceous border along the back still coming to life again lots of amazing tulips some really unusual varieties I'm excited to see how these come out that one looks like it could be rather spectacular and these ones are quite unusual too and then hopefully before too long it'll be 
popping off with lots of beautiful alliums. Like these two little ones here. Okay, we're on countdown. I think another five minutes and my banana and rhubarb loaf will be done. I'm just gonna do a little bit of flower maintenance now. These ones were in our bedroom. Most of them, I think, might perk up a little bit with some more water. And then Charlie bought this lovely bouquet from Dalesford, so I'm just gonna arrange that. Um, and maybe add in a few branches from the hedgerows to fill it out as well. Okay, it's just started to rain, but I think I've just about finished in my lovely bunny vase with some chicken wire in it. It really helps to spread out bouquets so that you can really see every individual bloom, which I absolutely love. I also added in three or four of these beautiful, I think they're called parrot tulips from the garden and they've added a really gorgeous texture. Um, nice to add something from our own garden. I love these as well. They're really, really nice for greenery and bloom in one. We've got some spray roses, some beautiful anemone, my favourite, um, some regular roses, some hellebore down there somewhere, some tulips from Dalesford. A really, really beautiful bouquet and now I'm going to use the rest of the tulips I picked yesterday from our garden to freshen up the bunch that'll live in our bedroom. And there we go, a very simple but lovely dual coloured bouquet for our bedroom, a mixture of the foliage, oops, missed the vase, that bit, a mixture of foliage from our previous bouquet and a couple of blooms that were still going and then some tulips fresh from the garden. Now I'm going to take that inside, um, clear up the spent blooms, very much have a colour scheme this year, and then, Dexie, what are you doing my boy? And then I'm going to help Charlie grate some cheese for our macaroni cheese dinner. I'd give it a stir now and then do the second yeah, half. Yeah, right. I'd say that's enough. And then... Parmigiano. Nice. And crispy corners. So what have we got for dinner, mate? We have all from Dalesford. <laughs> Organic ribeye, oh, lovely, nice Friday treat. We don't really tend to eat red meat in the week, so it's always nice at the end of the week to have a little bit of red meat. Mm -hmm. um, Dexter particularly enjoys Dalesford ribeye. I do, Daddy. I don't. I don't really eat it from um, anywhere else anymore. Then we have a really seasonal menu, mate. Asparagus, asparagus season, British asparagus, mm -hmm. also amazing. We have some British spinach, organic, Dalesford, and we have wild garlic pesto that I've made to go on the side. It could be quite punchy. And in season, mustard mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is always in season. I can't believe you bought wild garlic. We don't have any left. Yeah, but you could pick it, darling. We could have picked it. I was going to pick some oh, earlier. The steak is good for you, mate. You're gonna like this. Oh, I'm gonna like that macaroni cheese. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, ooh, yes! Oh my goodness.
my darlings, it is Saturday morning. It's, well, actually it's 2 p.m. on Saturday. Charlie and I spent the morning at Bamford. Uh, we did, I did an hour long, what's it called, MBC, metabolic conditioning class, which was quite tough. Um, it was really good, but it was tough. And Charlie did a floor workout. Then I did 10 lengths in the pool. And then we did our cold, hot, cold, hot, cold therapy therapy in the cold water plunge pool and the sauna so it's been a really lovely start to the day let me just pop some lip balm on um it's quite funny there because i meet so many lovely ladies and gentlemen um but mostly ladies and honestly if you wanted to be an unofficial influencer, just hang out in the changing rooms at luxury members clubs because the amount of product recommendations, obviously everyone there has like chosen the products that they're gonna bring in their makeup bag. We were talking, I was converting them all to Mitchum's natural deodorant. We were talking about Tim Spector's Zoe test. Uh, I've been recommending various shampoos to people, facial treatments. It's, it's just really lovely. Everyone there is very like-minded, all age groups, but a lot of chat about wellness, um, beauty. It's just a really nice community there. And I've met so many lovely people. Um, it's funny because as a members, like a private members club kind of wellness club, you're not actually allowed, according to the rules, to elicit conversation with someone that you don't know. So say for example, I saw Victoria Beckham there, I wouldn't be allowed to go up and say hello. Similar similar in Soho House, but when you're like all doing things together like a workout class or you're going into, you're lowering your body into a two degree pool of water and then going into a sauna, you naturally start chatting to people and it would be quite tragic if you didn't really, wouldn't it? So yeah, it's just really lovely. Um, I did not <laughs> do this to my hair while I was there. I actually put my silk sausage in as soon as I got into the car. So later on today, we are waiting for a phone call from George or Petra to let us know that they are leaving London. They're literally waiting, or they're filling up their moving van as we speak. And then Charlie and I and Viv and Martin, Charlie's parents, are gonna head over to Morton um, and help them move in, which I'm really excited to do. I'm gonna do a little bit of playing around with some new makeup um, while we wait for that phone call. I received some amazing new bits from Tom Ford Beauty the other day, and I thought that we would try them out together. Um, so this is all from their Rose Prick. I think it's a Rose Prick collection. At least the packaging is the same as their iconic Rose Prick fragrance, which is just gorgeous. The most luxury rose scent I think I've ever experienced. But my new obsession is actually this. So Soleil du Soleil de Faux, I presume that's how it's pronounced, is this fragrance here. Oh, and it is just oh it's so gorgeous i'm just gonna google what the notes are because i'm very bad at guessing wow it is a pricey one inspired by bronze strokes of fiery sunset new soleil de faux of course tuberose that's why i love it so much tuberose accord warm ambers and exotic sandalwood literally all of my favorite scents it is absolutely gorgeous. I would highly recommend if you walk past anywhere that's got a Tom Ford store or counter, I would definitely recommend checking that out. I think that might just be my new elevated everyday, I mean, it's very bougie for an everyday, but elevated fragrance. And now they have got these gorgeous eyeshadow palettes. This is Forbidden Pink Eye Color Cord. And in here, let's just remove the plastic. I really don't know why they still do these little brushes. No one that spends this much money on an eyeshadow palette doesn't buy lovely brushes as well. So in here we have got the four colors. You've got, um, this is actually really deep. To be honest, all of these would be like lash line colors for me, pretty intense. I think this one is a bit lighter. This is the rose, yes, this is the rose topaz color block. There we go. To be honest, quite autumnal tones for a collection launching in spring, um, but really, really beautiful tones. And if you may remember one of my 
my everyday eyeshadow palette is Naked Pink from Tom Ford and I've had this for well over a year. In fact, I'm going to top my makeup up with this now. I had it for well over a year and it's not touching, hitting pan on any of the quads, which just goes to show what a good investment this is because you just get so much use out of these. This is such a favourite of mine. I love Tom Ford eyeshadow. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's the new eyeshadow quads and perfume from Tom Ford. And then we've got two new satin matte lip colours. I look a little bit pasty, don't I? I'm going to put a little bit of bronzer on. I only have a tiny bit of makeup in my gym bag. So I'll never have that much on after a workout. I think the light is making me look quite pale as well. Lovely. Okay, so these new lipsticks, we've got number 26 here, which is To Die For, as in that's the actual name of the product. This beautiful coral, quite intense for an everyday look. And then we've got Naked Rose. Hopefully this is a little more neutral. Ooh, it's kind of, again, that's quite autumnal, I would say. But look at this beautiful packaging. Both a little bit bold for me for an everyday makeup look. I think my mum will love this one, Naked Rose. So I might actually pop that one to the side for her. And I'll save this one here for when I want to have a bold lip colour. But for now, I'm just going to pop on some lip liner. Let's stick with Tom Ford, Sable Smoke, that is my autumn everyday lip colour. Um, is it Fascinator? My other favourite, where is it? That's weird, I literally used it yesterday and it's vanished. I must have put it in a handbag or something. Okay, I will use Clay de Po Influential. There we go, nice and balmy for an everyday look. Okay, well, we're literally just waiting now for George and Petra to message us to say that they are on their way. So, um, hmm. let me show you some of the bits that were in my goodie bag from the Wild Swim yesterday. Lots of sustainable things. So, <laughs> another ocean bottle. And this must be a new design because I've never seen one before with a flip up. Yes. Um, so if you do prefer to slurp from something as opposed to chugging something down, then that is a new design. I presume my Josie LDN for 10% off discount code should work on this collection as well. <laughs> I love this when there's practical things in there. Seep, an eco kitchen sponge scourer made from cellulose and loofah. I think when you use it, it softens up. Um, and that could be very, very useful. Well, it will be very, very useful. There was also this gift set from Walida, Nourishing Body Wash and Sensitive Body Lotion. I really love Walida as a brand. I use their skin food very regularly as a hand cream, lip balm. It's really, really lovely. And actually you're balanced on, let me just do a little swap. You were balanced on this, which is their Hydrating Facial Mist, Certified Natural Skin Care. This is really nice if you're a gardener, because if you are out... I must stop speaking <laughs> straight after spraying a mist. If you're out in the garden um, and your skin can get a little bit dry, so it's nice to have a face mist. My, I would keep this in the greenhouse, but I fear that it would um, be too hot in there and it would go a little bit gross, but that, I feel, is going to be a favourite. So, yes, yeah, some really lovely products in there. Um, they also gave a £200 Aspiga gift voucher. It's funny because the gift voucher is on seed paper, but I'm not going to plant a £200 voucher, so maybe they will scribble on it, and then I can take it home again and plant it, so yeah. Oh, I never even showed you my finished rhubarb and banana cake, but we'll hopefully get to try it as soon as we get to PNGs later. <sighs> Okay, I'm kind of just chatting to you guys now to um <laughs> to waste time because we're literally just waiting now. Uh, so I am going to switch the camera off, do a little tidy up in here, and then hopefully I'll catch up with you again when we are on the road to go and see PNG.
Okay, I think I've probably got about an hour until we need to leave. I am going to trot around the garden. Uh, obviously we've got tulips and just see if I can muster up a little jam jar, a little jam jar posy to take over as a mini welcome to your new home gift. Um, obviously we've got something sparkly to uh, open as well. But yeah, I thought I would see if even in this very early stage when not much is in bloom. I know that there are some blooming blossom branches. Ooh, alliteration on the, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Dicky going to the bathroom. Um, yeah, on the side of the road, but I'm gonna see how far I can get with bits from the garden. So these are the tulips that I picked the other day. I'm going to start with these. Okay, I think they're gonna need to be a little bit shorter. So let's go about that level. I always cut on a slant and then that increases the area that the plant can drink the water. Right, let's go and see what foliage I can find to make this look beautiful. Are you going to come with your mummy? On a foliage foraging session, my boys. Let's go. Hmm. I wonder if I can find any decent twigs of rosemary or are these all too dry? No, I think they're all too dry. Let's head around the back of the pond. There's quite a lot of alive foliage around the back there. Might stop and add some blossom branches to this on our way. If we drive past any. Hmm. Not quite as much here as I'd hoped. Oh no. Oh dear. I'm gonna add some more tulips because I'm struggling with foliage. So George and Petra are literally doing the drive now from London to the Cotswolds and it's giving me a little bit of deja vu. I'm remembering it was 157 weeks ago, just over three years ago that Charlie and I did that exact thing and I remember how emotional it was. On my Instagram, if you click on the home highlight, you have to scroll all the way back, but the home highlight, I feel like this captures the emotion from the day. I was sharing our drive, oh my gosh, I was in tears at this moment. London too. The Cotswolds, oh my gosh. I remember this drive, we literally played the holiday soundtrack. It was such a beautiful day, oh my gosh. And that was the first time I ever shared this house on Instagram. We've arrived and now it's time to make this old house our home. And that is our home Instagram. We hit 10,000 followers in less than 24 hours, that was amazing. And there's lots of clips of the house the day that we moved in, lots of empty bedrooms. That's now the pink room. That is the pink room. A video about the history of the house, oh my gosh. It doesn't feel like three years since we've lived here, but when I look back at these memories, <laughs> look how much cleaner the pond was. We must have messed it up. Yeah, it's meant to, oh my God, our old kitchen garden. It was lovely. It was a lovely kitchen garden, but obviously our kitchen garden now is just sensational. It was such a hot April, do you remember? Those old trees. Let me know if you guys have been watching my videos this long. Herb garden maintenance, painting the duck house, our master bedroom before we moved in. Gosh, we had such lovely weather. Look at that, Sunday. Oh my gosh, the plans for my dressing room. Today was a bit of a manic one, which... Master bathroom. Why is that only on close friends? Don't know. So many memories. <laughs>
just done a load of um, potting of empty pots with nothing in. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with them in a second. Basically, we just had a little accident in here where Charlie grabbed a broom and it knocked this off the side. It had my basil propagating in it. However, it's meant that I've been able to see this. Now, I actually only did the basil propagating two days ago. So this is the one that I dipped the end in rooting powder. And I've mentioned it before. You found the root of the problem? I found the root of the problem, that this rooting powder from Wilco, I saw it as a hack, I think during lockdown, that this is the best one. In 48 hours, look at that root. That's an inch a day. This root grows faster than anything that I've known. That's insane. So I think what I'm gonna do is propagate a load more basil in these pots because in like a week I could have five new basil plants. That is amazing, uh, amazing. Okay, I did it as a time-lapse before, but I will show you properly this time. So first of all, I'm taking this little tray and I'm pouring out some of the rooting powder. I took a photo and put it on my stories and it looked like I was doing something a little bit dodgy in the greenhouse for a bit of an energy boost. Lol. Okay, um, right, I'm just gonna go and fill this with some clean water. Okay. Right, so I've got my water and I've got my rooting powder. By the way, you don't need rooting powder. Um, this is, here's one I did earlier, Blue Peter style, and just leaving the ends in water and in a week or so it'll develop roots, but it hasn't even developed any roots yet compared to the one which had the rooting powder, which as you just saw had like four inch roots, which is insane. Okay, take a lovely store-bought um, basil. You don't want um, any that's flowering already or any that's really crowning up at the top, but I would take a long stem. And what you want to do is snip it, give it a little snip just underneath a leaf node, and then remove any of these lower leaves because that's actually just gonna take away from the energy of the plant there's quite a few little leaves leaves growing out here taking them away and i'm just leaving the leaves at the top now oops these little leaves of course we can use in some pasta sauce later okay dunking the base of the basil or if you're american basil <laughs> in the water and then into the rooting powder get quite a good coverage on there. Oops. Right, now, compost. I just use a multi-purpose compost using my Sharpie to make a nice little hole and placing my powdered basil into the hole and tucking it in. Oops, there we go. Okay, I'll give that some water and I like to just do this a few times to maximize my chances of success. So let's do it again. Another one here, getting a bit leggy. Snip beneath the leaf node, remove the lower leaves and save them for our pasta sauce, because they'll be yummy. Donkey, donkey, dusty, dusty. Pot, prod. we go tuck it in and then I'll give those oops did I just snap that no it's okay I'll give those a little water and in a few days time they'll root and we'll have some fresh new basil plants yay now I've just seen in here two squashes are um squashed together you could say so I'm actually gonna see if I can lift one and give it its own pot because they are just gonna need all the energy from the soil so okay let's start with my trusty sharpie making a hole I'm gonna do quite a big one in there and I'm gonna lift the more established squash by its leaves it's always a little bit dodgy I'm gonna help it along a bit Give both 
both of these are water to help the roots mix with the soil. Right, it's time for a quick clean up in here. back up here oh my gosh I swear that still feels damp I've had my silk sausage in for three hours three and a half hours maybe but my hair was a little bit damp in the middle when I put it in George and Petra I think are about 45 minutes away from their new home so we're gonna leave here in five or probably realistically ten to go and help them. Oh my gosh, I did this too tightly. Oh no. Oh no. It's stuck. Right, let's see if we have any success. As always with silk heatless curls, if you don't have success, as long as you've not got anywhere really important to go to, then it doesn't really matter because you've not damaged your hair, which I feel like should be my slogan. <laughs> Tutankhamun car moon phase, I actually wrap the hair bubbles that I use while silk sausaging around the silk sausage so they're all kept together. Okay, might be all right actually, but my hair is really silky at the moment because I'm using masks, so curls don't tend to last. Right, I'm gonna get changed into something that's not covered in compost and then we'll brush out the curls a little bit. Okay, I've just popped on another casual jumper because we are gonna be doing boxes and things like that. And then I've just got a nice Holland Cooper jumper with me to get changed in case we go and grab dinner anywhere. Um, I know you shouldn't brush them out straight away, but I'd rather it was a bit more relaxed anyway. I think this has worked fairly well, actually. Not bad, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna let these sit and I'm gonna take a clip in the car with me. Okay. Let's hit the road. My little tray of moving house goodies. Tulips from the garden. This is my banana and rhubarb loaf. Some of the energy balls that I made the other day. And that's actually my bottle of water. This little wicker tray that I got from Amazon. We use it so much. It is so, so handy. I definitely recommend having one of these at home. And these are the blooms that I did yesterday. Looking gorgeous. So fresh. Such beautiful spring colours. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Hello my darlings, it is now Sunday morning. Don't think I picked up the camera after leaving the house yesterday. Anyone that's moved house before will know that it's just a little bit manic <laughs> to say the least, but George and Petra have successfully officially moved in. They are now officially our Cotswold neighbors, which is so exciting. Sorry, I'm out of breath because I just ran up the stairs with a basket of washing. Um, but yeah, I basically just didn't want to end the vlog without giving you that little update. They're in, they've got a house full of boxes, but the furniture is mostly in the right places and it's very, very exciting. They are very, very happy in their new home. We went out for an Indian meal at a place called the Raj Mahal on Morton High Street and I would recommend it so highly. It's a really old and like quirky building. You go upstairs in and you, it's kind of like you're in someone's house, but the food and the service was spectacular. So definitely recommend the Raj Mahal if you're looking for a delicious Indian meal around Morton and Marsh. But anyway, darlings, I'm actually gonna end the vlog here because I'm gonna start a new one today because today is a new day. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in at the next one. And the lighting has just sorted itself out in the last five seconds. So there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Gannon. Okay, I'll see you in the next one, darlings. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. If you're the kind of person that has this video on in the background and you've let it roll to the end and you don't normally give a thumbs up, do it now. Why not? Just give it a thumbs up. That would be wonderful. <laughs> okay, darlings. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.